Hello, I hope you're well. Welcome to another video. I am about to do a tarot reading for uh, the full moon in Aquarius for everyone, but I've just been doing some background on the moon in Aquarius and uh, on August itself and some other planets. I know nothing about astrology and I've just started learning. So uh, I thought I would um, talk about what's happening in August that way. And after making a few notes and some other interesting points that I've found out about August and about the full moon and what you can do on it is a bit of a ritual and things that you can look at. So uh, let's get started. If you like this, let me know and we will uh, do it again. So the moon today on the 1st of August is the full moon in Aquarius. And I believe it's a super moon and I'm sure I heard that there's going to be another one at the end of the month, uh, which will be a super moon as well. Or it's a blue moon, I heard. Um, this moon today, uh, its names are Sturgeon Moon, you've got Corn Moon or Silk Moon. And then the Old English and Anglo-Saxon for us in the UK here uh, used to be known as the Barley Moon, Fruit Moon or the Grain Moon. Okay. Now, the other uh, corresponding uh, thing I want to talk about is we're actually in Leo season today. So, uh, and the corresponding angel for Leo, I'm sorry, I'm seeing a little bit of activity around me, spirit-wise. This, this happens a lot here. Uh, let me know if you see anything. Uh, so, the corresponding angel for Leo is Archangel Raziel. Okay, who, I'm going to read you a little bit out of this book. It's the Doreen Virtue book. Um, so, Archangel Raziel helps us, this is in Leo. Um, Archangel Raziel helps us heal deep-seated hurts by peeling away layers of pain we've accumulated. So, you quite possibly going to be, going to be doing uh, that this month, Leo. And um, so, if you have emotional pain that needs healing... He's the Archangel. You should call upon for forgiveness and releasing the past. Okay, so I'm talking to some of you out there that needs to do that, who need to do that. Raziel also informs people about esoteric subjects. Uh, he's the Archangel who can help us to understand spiritual symbolism, past lives, dream interpretation, sacred geometry and other profound topics. Okay. Uh Compare this with the astrological symbol of the sun, which is aligned with Leo. The sun shines a bright light wherever it goes. Think of a tarot the tarot card, the sun. Okay, and you'll get a sense of how Archangel Raziel and Leo work together, bringing light and understanding where there has been confusion. So that's quite interesting for the month uh, to be going through that. So... Uh, what else did I want to talk to you about? Yeah, so the other thing is that it is the start of a uh, festival. Uh, right. um, loaf Mass, or I'm going to pronounce this right, Nunasa. It's, I think it's pronounced a few different ways by the um, sounds of it. Uh, Ooh. It's the celebration of the harvest and new grain for bread. In Old English, this became Lamas or Loaf Mass. Uh, the Romans also, uh, and they're talking about the Romans here, also had a harvest festival during this month. That of the Cons Cons Consulia, I can't even say that, so I'm not going to even say it. C O N S U E L I E. A, uh, when sacrifices to Consus were made. Consus was the god of the underground storehouse where the green was kept. So I wonder if we're uh, harvesting something this month, yeah? What are you harvesting out of uh, the year? I think that's something to be to be looking at. Um, now, it's also, this festival is also strongly linked to stories of sacrifice as well as death so i think there's uh some things that you've had to you have to give up and uh shed from your life you know things uh, that need releasing things you need to just let go of 
okay and um sometimes having to make a compromise i'm getting all, um, a sacrifice uh, to gain something else to bring in something else okay and it's also about you know giving giving something back for what you've been given this year as well okay Right, am I always saving if I what's the other bit of information I wanted to tell you? Yeah. Lamas is the festival of the dying and rising god. Uh, and um it's all to do with the Celtic sun god Lu. Luch. I don't know how they would pronounce that. Okay, so it's something dying, something all dying, something uh new coming in. Okay, something rising, like a rebirth as well. Okay, so I thought that was quite interesting. And uh, what else have we got? Yeah, because there are herbs for um, the um, corn moon. Because uh, some people are really interested in this. Uh, herbs, chamomile, St. John's wort, bee, angelica, fennel, rue, orange. The colours for this moon are yellow and gold. The flowers are sunflower and marigold. If you're into aromatherapy, the scents are frankincense and heliotrope. Uh, stones, crystals, cat's eye, carnelian, jasper, fire agate. Trees, hazel, alder, cedar. Animals, lion, phoenix, sphinx, dragon. Yes, yeah, that phoenix rising from the ashes, resurrecting, yeah. Birds, you've got the crane, you've got the falcon and the eagle. Eagles, seeing a bird's eye view of everything, seeing the bigger picture. And we've got the deities, we've got here Ganesh, uh, Thoth, Hathor, Diana, Hecate and Nemesis. And yeah, power flow, energy into harvesting, gathering, appreciating, vitality, health and friendships. So that's what's uh, coming up for uh, August. Okay, um, 1st of August, Festival of New Bread among the Celtic countries. Among the Aztecs, the festival, I can't, there's no way I'm going to pronounce that. The God of the Calendar and Spiritual Fire. <laughs> okay, so quite interesting. Oh, now this is interesting as well. August the 6th, a festival of Thoth in Egypt, beginning of the month of ghosts in China and Singapore. Very interesting. And August the 7th in Egypt, the breaking of the Nile dedicated to Hathor. August the 12th, the Egyptian blessing of the boats. And August 13th and 15th, Diane of the Wildwood and Hecate, the dark mother of the moon in very early Greece and Rome. Full moon. Ah, uh, Okay. And then on August the 31st, Hindu festival of Anant Shatodasi, women's purification honouring the goddess Ananta. Very interesting, I think. Okay, so also with this moon, the day of the full moon, and I was just having a flick through this book. Just, and it's all about, uh, on the day of the full moon, if you're looking to, to get success in business, uh, this is the day to switch gear and assess progress. Concentrate on bringing existing projects to fruition over the next two weeks. And if necessary, plan to eliminate all time consuming and unproductive procedures. OK, so that's just a little bit of advice for uh, what you need to do there. OK, so let's get into it. Uh, my little uh, I've got the. Um, Night sky, yeah, <laughs> okay, and um, just found out a little bit of the the full moon in Aquarius is about groups, it's about the collective, it's about uh, group things, you know, uh, issues that concern the collective, okay. So, uh, I had a, a look further look into my little almanac and I found that in this month we have Jupiter in Aries, Saturn in Aquarius, Uranus in uh, Aries and Neptune in Pisces all happening this month. So Jupiter is the planet of joy and good fortune. 
uh, opportunity, higher education, freedom and travel, rules, all things foreign, planet of truth, humanity, um, ruling law, justice, religion, philosophy and higher mind. Na uh, its nature is to be optimistic, encouraging and extrovert. Okay, so we've got uh, Jupiter and Aries, which is the first house, which is all about the self. Okay, so uh, for Jupiter to be in Aries, it's trailblazing. Uh, your self-belief will be high if it's, you know, in your first house. Um, rarely, um, uh, a person who, who's got, you know, uh, Jupiter in their first house rarely stops to think if something is achievable or not. They just do it. They're aiming straight towards a target, either for their own desires or the interest of an important cause. For them, second place is for losers. <laughs> Charming. We've also got Saturn, uh, as we said, in Aquarius, which is the 11th house. Now, Saturn is a bit of a, mm, there's a lot of restrictions, obstacles, uh, boundaries, endings and death. Uh, it rules authority, uh, career, duty and responsibilities. All this year is going to come up this month. Um, his nature is pessimistic, sometimes realistic and serious. Okay, now the Aquarius is the eleventh house. It's for hopes and wishes, uh, and it's also, like I said, about the collective, the family and friends, societies, organisations, political systems. And uh, Saturn in Aquarius is about being uh, systematic, logical, uh, going by the book, being impartial, social conscience. Yeah, challenging anything outdated, and. Uh, strong personal opinions yeah okay so that's going to be uh, a challenge for this month as well and then you've got uranus which is in aries and uranus is the planet of rebellion anarchy social advancement ecology and technology rules all that comes out of the blue so no, probably going to be a few surprises uh, challenges all that Saturn stands for, hierarchy and tradition. Uh, this planet's nature is explosive, sudden, unexpected, erratic, you know, unexpected events, unexpected things going on, situations, erat it's erratic and unpredictable. And when it's in Aries, which is the first house, the self, uh, you know, it's regarding physical body, you know, um, the first house is about physical body appearance, ego, sense of self. So it's it's going to be uh, uh, clearly there's going to be some challenges to some uh, outdated beliefs, things that need to go. OK, then we've got Neptune. Now, Neptune. What did I say? Neptune in Pisces. OK, so that's about uh, that's the planet of imagination, illusion glamour, escapism, uh, and you've got from mysticism to pain-free drugs and alcohol. It rules all things. Marines has a lot of water, which is a lot of emotions, but, you know, water represents that. Um, so it's all about psychology. It's watery world of emotions, rules fusion, suffering and sacrifice, which is interesting. It's what's going on this month. There has to be some sacrifices. Uh, the planet's nature has to be subtle, seductive, addictive, mysterious, magical, or disorientating. And it's in Pisces in the 12th house, okay? Now, the 12th house is the house of blind spots, ambushes, self undoing, and it's the domain of hidden enemies and those lost to us through estrangement and early death. It's a house of sacrifices, seclusion, places of confinement, such as hospitals and prisons. And we've got the pursuit of inner contemplation and karmic lessons. And uh, also about those who devote their lives to the spiritual good of others. So that's quite interesting as well. I get the impression that you're going to be uh, made to think about a few things there. It's to me, there's a theme here about getting rid of outdated beliefs, uh, beginning again, rebirthing into something new, giving something back for what you've already got this year and um, taking stock. But not just in an individual sense, but in a collective sense as well. It's definitely a big collective theme here again. It's about moving on um, old hierarchies 
things, institutions coming down, new things uh, being born, changes to those institutions uh, so the collective can progress. OK, right. Well, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you found that interesting. Let me know if you do and we'll do it again next month so I can keep learning. Oh, I'm sorry about that. But my phone switched off again and keeps going to the emergency message, which is really interesting because I've had this quite a few times now and it's nothing. I, I haven't done anything the phone. I have so much spiritual activity going on here at the moment. Uh, so I apologize. I, I, I don't know. Uh, let me know if you like this so we can do it again and I'll, um, you know, I can keep learning about the planets and things and so can you. And learning about what the month brings it's uh i think we'll we can grow on that we can um because i was certainly getting some channeled information there so very interesting for me i hope it was for you okay well i'm gonna go away and do the full moon reading for you now so that'll be uh released just after this video and uh, i hope you have a good month okay please join me for daily reads and reads for monthly reads for star signs and some snappy tarot as well where i do some shorts okay i'm going to be doing some runes as well and yeah um please like share subscribe give me a thumbs up this video uh because it helps the channel move i have another main channel uh, which I do channel world channeled messages and predictions. I've got a thing on there about Oppenheimer at the moment. Well, I had a very strange experience in the cinema yesterday. So um, check those videos out. That one will be released tomorrow. The set, there's two parts. Uh, the one before I went and what was happening the night before. And then uh, the one after. If you would like uh, to develop your psychic gifts. I can bring them out for you through my awakening and psychic development coaching which you can uh, find all the links to um, in the description. I also do personal reads, uh, Angel Life Purpose reads are really popular, so check them out. And I can do healing as well for you. Let me know what you uh, would like. Okay, take care of yourselves and I shall see you next time. Bye.